Ninjas. What is up, Ninjas? My name is Semrold, and this is going to be the ultimate tech house baseline tutorial. Now, I want to let you know off the get go that we are going to be synthesizing these baselines, and I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips on how to program them to sound like your favorite artist. I always ask you guys to leave tutorial suggestions in the comments, so make sure to do that. But in the previous video on the Fisher Climax, two of you guys left comments on how to make the Camel Fat baseline from a certain song. I'll leave the comment here. And another one of you requested how to make Solardo style baselines, like again, insert track here. The comment should be here. Shout out to you guys. Thank you guys for commenting, like always. And again, guys, if you guys have tutorial suggestions, comment them down below in the comments. It could be from any genre. The thing is, is that when I wake up in the morning at 5 a.m., I look through my tutorial suggestions. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to focus on this one today. And then I do my research before starting a video, which usually takes me about an hour to two, depending on how hard it is to achieve the tutorial. Now, if you guys are in the market for a tech house sound bank and you want to support this channel, guys, make sure to go over to evilsounds.com and check out the Dirty Chicken Silent One sound set. That sound set was created with tech house producers in mind that want to get the style of Dirty Bird and this ain't Bristol. I will also include a free download for you guys that is meant to go with that Silent One sound set, but you guys can still download it for free. It's going to be a collection of one-shot drum samples that are made specifically, again, for Dirty Bird and this ain't Bristol style of house music. So, if you're into that, make sure to check it out, guys, and let's get started with this tutorial. All right, guys, so the first bass I'm gonna teach you guys how to make is gonna be that Camel Fat One. Now, the moment I heard that bass, I was like synth wave, I was in space, I was driving, you know, my fake Lamborghini in my dreams. Uh, but pretty much, guys, it's very easy to create, and a lot of synth wave waves are gonna be created by the saw wave table, which is what we're gonna use for this sound. So what we're gonna do is have a saw that's going to be the lowest one. Then we're going to have another one that's up an octave. Now, from here, what I did with the song, guys, the Camel Fat one, is I downloaded it. I put it into Ableton. I got rid of the mono signal so I could only hear the sides to see if this had a wide... Uh, a wide sound to it and if it did then I know that I need to use more than one unison in one of these guys So on this guy, I'm gonna put two voices and detune Instantly, it's gonna turn stereo as you can hear Mono now it's in stereo. Now, we still have the mono song coming from oscillator A, but oscillator B is a bit louder as it's, it has higher perceived loudness with, when it's in stereo. But I know we need to have something like that because, again, when I heard the Camel Fat song and I got rid of the monos, their bass was in the stereo field and in the center field. So that's how I know I need to do that. Plus, you know, you can hear that the bass is kind of detuned a bit. So there, we're going to use a low-pass filter to just shape this with an envelope. We're going to lower the sustain. Now decay. Now here is where you're going to pull back on this modulation, wrap beat into it as well. Now be careful on how much you're opening it up. When I'm left clicking here and going up and down, if you overdo it, you know, you're going to get that pop back kind of uh, other style of bass, but we want this. You can add a bit of resonance if you Now another thing too that I noticed with their song is that they're using another sub bass and then they have this bass. So get rid of some of the lows on this and use the sub bass if you can. So you get this vibe which is what they have in their song. Now with the side chain. Now from here, you can make it your own by just switching the wavetables, guys. Like you can try using a square or cube poles and, and whatnot. Those usually work really Now before we continue to the next bass, guys, I do want to talk about the programming of this bass. As you guys can see, there's something that is really here that's kind of like a theme. So if you notice, if we put the D-sharp minor chord which is that, and we'll add the octave up of the D-sharp. You can see that all the notes playing in the melody of Camel Fat is going to be pretty much notes harmonic, a.k.a. the notes in that chord. So F, D-sharp, F-sharp, A-sharp, D-sharp, F-sharp. So that's a good way to start your chord progressions if you have no idea on, on where to go with it. You can always try and stick to those notes. Now the second bass that I'm going to teach you guys how to make guys is going to be the Solardo one and it's going to be one of the more popular tech house bass as you're going to hear out there, okay? And it's going to be mainly a sustainable one that really sounds fat, it's in your face. So how do we create that? Well easily, biggest tip I can give you guys is you can go with a sign or you can go with a, you know, with a square. If we go with a sign wrap, it's going to sound like that, but a lot of people aren't doing that unless we want that. 
Very boomy one. Now, a lot of people in right now, the modern tech house that I hear a lot on the Beatport's Top 100 is utilizing a square because it's the heaviest wave. And we're going to cover that with a filter. We don't want to cover almost everything where we just have that you no know, sign of death at the bottom. We want to cover it to where we still have those mid harmonics, so around 150. Now, when we bring in the Solardo track, the Solardo track has this rounded feel where this frequency and this frequency are equally the same. So how do we achieve that? And this is where this tip comes in handy. This is one of those things that a lot of people don't do. And they ask me why their bass lines aren't fat. So pretty much, we're going to grab another square. You can use a saw too if you want. And we're going to put it up an octave. Route it into the filter. Arm face down, so we start always at the same position on the way. And now we have that rounded feel. So pretty much what's happening here is we're layering another sound that's very similar to the one we had, aka oscillator and oscillator B. And this one's covering the higher frequencies a lot better. Like the fundamental of this one is an octave higher, which is in that around that area. So that's why you see that boost. Now they're equally the same. If you distort just a tiny bit more. You get that fat bass line, and it's easy to create these, as you guys can see. Make sure to mono legato them as well as the previous one we did. But that's one of the things I don't see a lot of people do with these tech house bass lines, okay? Um, you're not going to add anything else to it. This is as basic as it gets, guys. You can distort and, and use different kinds of distortion. You can do stuff like that to make it more interesting if you want. But at the end of the day, it's going to be two squares like this, one an octave. And that's one of the biggest things I can tell you guys if you're designing your own ba uh, bass lines is to do that. If you're using presets from another company or a company um, and you find the bases aren't that fat, try adding another oscillator with an octave up just like this. Make sure you cover it the highs because we really don't want it to be like um, And that's it's as simple as that, guys. Now Now the last bass that I'm going to teach you guys is one that I haven't really seen a tutorial on on YouTube and I'm kind of surprised. And it's actually very simple to create, but the, there's a key thing about it and that is going to be the attack of the bass line. Instead of having the, the bass line be pa pa, it has a little bit of attack so it feels sort of like a little heartbeat as you're going to see why I'm saying that in a second. So I have this kind of MIDI going right now. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower down this three octaves just because I'm at a high A with the mid. I'm gonna go with a sine wave on this. Which sounds good, but we just wanna give this a bit of attack. And you can feel like it's like a heartbeat. So if you ever like get a sign like, hey, can you do the sound of sound for our video game? We need a fucking heartbeat. Just grab a sine wave and, and you know, give it a little bit of attack and you're all set, dude. That is going to be the end of the tutorial, guys. Three bass lines for you to learn how to make. And the funny thing about it is, at the end of the day, guys, the programming is almost the same for almost every other bass line out there when it comes to Tech House. The difference is going to be in the type of wavetables you use, the type of effects, if it has chorus, flanger, phaser sometimes. That is going to be it, you know. But now you know how to create these, and I think you guys are going to have fun doing this. I know you will. So make sure to leave comments down below on tutorial suggestions you want to see tomorrow for tomorrow's video. And I'll see you guys next time, ninjas. You guys can support the channel at Evil Sounds. Check out the Dirty Chicken Silent on Sounds set uh confession series if you like the, the harder style of house and i'll see you guys tomorrow for another video but